Welcome back to the garage. Today is going to be a story time video on a frequently asked question on why I became a gearhead. Now I'm incredibly lucky to have such an amazing father. My father would always take me out, even at a young age, into the garage, set me down, even if it was just holding the flashlight while he worked on something at night, and always taught me how to work on stuff with my own hands. And the reason why he done that is because his father done the same for him. So I come from a long line of guys that like to go out and do the job themselves instead of relying on someone else to fix it for them. Now my grandfather back in the day actually had his own salvage business, which is very awesome. He had a low boy truck and trailer at one point in time, and that Case 680 Construction King Backo that you see in a lot of these videos was his absolute pride and joy. He bought that thing after it was only a few years old, used it every single day around this place to load scrap on trucks, move machinery, and just to do everyday tasks that would be impossible to do without a piece of machinery just like that. Now, these two vehicles behind me are the product of having your own salvage business. Now when my grandfather had his salvage business, he wouldn't even have to advertise a lot because word of mouth spread quickly back then. My grandfather in the mid 60s got called up just one day out of the blue by a gentleman that owned a transportation company near St. Louis, Missouri. He was selling his property and he had to get rid of two old hay trucks that were sitting on the property. So he called my grandfather up and asked him if he wanted to buy them. Now. Keep in mind, this was in the mid-60s, so these vehicles, both of them, were over 30 years old. So please don't go down in the comment section and say bad things about my grandfather on letting these things sit outside. They were already in very rough condition whenever he got them. If they would have been in really good shape, he would have kept them inside of a barn or some kind of building. Now every once in a while, they would run across a good vehicle that was in good shape, and they would keep it out of the weather. My dad, at one point in time, whenever I was a little kid, had a 1929 International pickup truck. Short bed, it was all complete, but he ended up selling that. It would have been nice to have had now, but he wouldn't have known back then that I would have liked to work on that kind of stuff. But anyhow, let me take you down off of the camera stand and I'll show you both of these old rough trucks. Now before I go any further and forget, like I did in the last video, I just wanted to briefly mention the fact that I recently acquired a P.O. Box. Do you have fan mail of any kind? pictures of your projects, stickers. I would absolutely love to see that kind of stuff. It's P.O. Box 851 in the beautiful town of Bourbon, Missouri. And who knows, maybe there'll even be enough stuff to make a video on. But anyhow, back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, so here's the old Ford. And you may not even need to be a Ford guy to know this, but you know what that means. The fenders are actually in not too bad a shape on this old truck. The headlights, the buckets for them are in good shape. Let me pop the hood down here. There's the old flathead in there. Radiators in it, generators on it, carburetor. I mean, from the cow section forward on both of these trucks, they are incredibly complete. The engine is actually not even stuck in this one. So, there may be a video in the future on trying to get this old truck running. But I mean, the transmission is in here, steering column. You can see the old frame back here. Got the rear end. These trucks have been sitting for a long time in the field. So it would be neat to maybe do a video on seeing if I can get one of these old things to start. Yeah, you can see how long they've been sitting down here. There's a tree going up right by the drive shaft. So there's the old Ford, and let's go over this Sterling. This Sterling is complete as well. You can see the starter up on here. I know my dad said back in the day he actually tried to uh, get this engine unstuck. I think this engine is stuck, but might be able to put some Marvel Mystery Oil or something in the cylinders, 
see if this thing could actually free up. Now it's got the radiator in there. The sheet metal is just kind of hanging here. It's not bent or anything, and you can see how nice the these little side doors open up and everything on here. The fenders on this truck aren't really in too bad a shape neither. Now they had a hay bed on both of these, but you can see that there actually was parts of this cab that were complete on here. You can see the back walls of it were actually laying on here. That's probably a good indication of how long this thing has been sitting here. You see the old rear end, the old frame on this truck. Kind of amazing you can see maybe inside the frame rail there's some wood that must have been from the factory because you can see the spring hanger is actually bolted to that i also wanted to briefly mention that i got all the gaskets ordered for the transmission from the last video for the 12 valve swap truck so as soon as they show up i can take the case apart and start resealing it but hopefully you enjoyed this short video if you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment or a question down below, subscribe if this is the kind of content that you're into, and just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project, whatever that project may be. Now that this video's over, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.